I'm back to work. I've been traveling on holiday for the past two months. I was in Thailand. Uh, I've had a wonderful time, but now it's back to work. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, make it happen with Squarespace. Guess what? I'm traveling, I'm traveling, I'm going away again. Tomorrow I'm flying with the Sidemen, Josh, Simon, and Randy to be specific. We are going on a one day trip, and I thought it would be cool to show you guys what I'm gonna pack for that shoot to help me do my job. I've done a video like this last year, so it'll be interesting to see how my kit has changed up. Every travel situation needs some sort of case, backpack, something to carry your shit in. And I've got three options. I've got option number one, this hefty thing. This is called the Low Pro, and these are all gonna be from the same brand, just because I really like this brand. The brand is called Low Pro. This one is called the Pro Trekker RLX 450AW Mark II. This is the largest capacity of bags that I have, and this is my usual go-to because I fit my camera gear all into this compartment, and then I've got my laptop that goes into this compartment. On this specific shoot, I'm not gonna be bringing my laptop with me just because I want to travel light. Plus, any footage that I wanna back up, I can now do it on my phone because my iPhone has a USB-C port, and I could just plug an SD card reader into that, and it can back up my data. Another thing that makes this backpack great is the fact that it's got wheels. Look at this. So you actually get to save your spine and then when you're in an airport or you're traveling around, you take this thing out and you can just wheel it around with you. Another bag from Low Pro. There you go, if you can compare these two, it's a bit slimmer and it still has a good capacity in it. This one is called the Pro Tactic BP450A W Mark II. It rolls off the tongue. There you go. And this is sort of the storage compartments here. So yeah, I've kind of got to make a decision what bag to use. I guess it's gonna be based on the amount of stuff I'm gonna be able to fit in it. Let's go with this one. Okay, every shoot begins with a camera. <laughs> so we're gonna put this bag aside and my choice of camera is the Sony FX3. Now this camera has actually grown to be my favorite. Previously, it used to be the A7S III and then the FX3 was like my B cam and people always ask my opinion about what one should I get, which one's better? And I could never give a definitive answer until now. The FX3 is a much better camera overall. You pay a little bit more, you lose out on the I, uh, v IVF on the viewfinder. IVF is something else, isn't it? So yeah, it doesn't have that, but question yourself. What are you gonna be doing more? Are you gonna be doing photography or videography the most? Now, if the answer is video, then you will benefit a lot more from the cinema line of the Sony cameras. Also, the button layout is very cool. It's geared towards filmmakers. It's very comfortable. I like the fact that this camera has a tally light for when you're recording. So if you see me press record, you can see a light over here. You can also see a light right in front of the camera and then the record button lights up. The camera body also has multiple mounting features. It's got all these quarter inch threads that you can use to screw accessories into. And I found that to be super handy uh, because it eliminates the need for myself to have a cage on the camera. Now, this lens that I'm shooting on is the Sony, is the new Sony G Master 16 to 35 f2.8 lens Mark II. It's a lighter version of the Mark I lens. Now, filters are very important when it comes to videography. If you wanna record cinematic looking footage, you wanna shoot in certain settings. And when you do that, uh, you have to compensate with extra filters to reduce the amount of light that's going into your lens. All technical stuff. My film people will know what I'm talking about. One of my essential uh, filters that I like to bring to shoots are an ND filter. Uh, this is a variable one. And it, as you can see, when I turn it, it blocks the amount of light entering the lens and this specific one is a two-in-one this is an ND filter and a CPL so I can also turn it and reduce glare and reflections in my shots I also pair that up with a pro mist so yeah to round things up my go-to setup for this shoot is going to be the Sony FX3 paired with the Sony G Master 16 to 35 mil f 2.8 mark II lens and recently you might have noticed that the Sidemen videos have a different creative look to them them, uh, when it comes to the color grade. Some people are speculating, have they got new cameras? No, these cameras we've had for a while now. It's just that only of, as of recent, we're trying to shoot in a flat profile, which then allows the post-production team to color grade the footage and really take advantage of the capability of these cameras. Color grading allows you to apply a very stylized look to your footage. 
Now, if you don't know what a color grade is, think about some of your favorite TV shows and films. A lot of them have a very stylized look to help them stand out or suit the type of show that they're filming. For example, in Breaking Bad, whenever they go to Mexico, you get all that orange tint. I'm not saying it's right, but sometimes they just apply creative LUT to make you as an audience feel a certain way. Or think about like The Matrix, Mad Max. 300, uh, they've all got very distinct creative looks. And that is all specially crafted by the post-production side, and someone is given a task there. They're called a uh, color grader, colorist, and yeah, that's their job, just to take the final piece and then make sure the colors are Mwah. So this camera, I'm not gonna pack in my bag because this is gonna have to be by my side at all times. I'm also gonna pair this. This is a Sony microphone. This is just really for me to be able to get nice scratch audio when I'm on the go. It's got a wind muff on it. Uh, the beautiful thing about this mic is that I don't need any cables to go in my camera because this has a hot shoe. So this hot shoe attachment simply clips onto my camera and yeah, no extra cables needed. It's nice and low profile and it comes with this wind muff to make this sound nice and crispy. This is my rig for travel shoots. Boom. On studio shoots, we have the luxury of having a lot of people down to help us do different roles, such as photography. On travel shoots, we kind of have to double up. So I have to double up as a videographer and a photographer. And I find it very tricky to change my video settings to then photo settings. In fact, what I do personally is I bring a second camera with me. I bring a photography camera which is this one. This is the A7R4, and I pair it with a Sony 35 Prime lens. I absolutely love this lens. I also pair it with a ProMist filter as well. So I typically have this around my waist like this, and then I'll have this handheld, and I'll probably have another strap. And then when I'm ready, do -do -do -do, pictures, done, continue with video. And of course, to power these cameras, I need my batteries. These last for about 40 minutes each, so I will take a couple more, but for now, we will drop these in the bag. I briefly spoke about just going handheld with this or just adding a tripod to the base, but the specific shoot that we're doing might require me to do some cool, slow, smooth cinematics, but not throughout the whole video, only one section of the video. And when it comes to gimbals, I've got two options on me here. I've got the DJI Ronin RS3, and I have the DJI Ronin RS3 Mini. Because I'm not using it for a very long period, and because I wanna go compact, I am gonna go for the mini version. Just because I can pack this down very tightly into my bag versus this thing. All of a sudden, that's packed down quite slimly. I could perhaps just pop into there. These accessories can go here as well. Nice. Squarespace is a website builder designed to give creatives all of the tools they need to unleash their full creative potential with their online presence. And with a range of user-friendly features and an interface that is easy to navigate, you can set up your own professional looking website within minutes. And with Fluid Engine, the next generation website design system from Squarespace, you have the total freedom to customize every design detail on your website effortlessly, even if you're a complete beginner with the platform. They offer a variety of different plans and you can always upgrade to a more advanced package once you need the extra features, such as a fully integrated online store or if you're planning on either selling digital products or physical goods. And speaking of the e-commerce side of things, my favorite feature is the online store, which allows you to convert your website into a fully functional online marketplace. Whether you have a catalog of cool photography prints you've been meaning to sell or a line of merch you want to offer, then Squarespace definitely has you covered. Squarespace is ideal for a whole host of creatives, whether you're a photographer, artist, designer, or pretty much anyone else for that matter. It's especially useful for the people who are looking for the perfect platform to showcase their portfolio, as Squarespace makes it easy to present your projects in customizable galleries that are sure to impress your audience. And because Squarespace has sponsored today's video, I'm able to offer a 14-day free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, use my code CONSTANTINE to get 10% off your purchase. The link's in the description, so give that a click and check it out for yourself. Next thing I have to worry about is an audio solution for the boys. So how am I gonna capture their audio the whole day without any stress? You know that thing I mentioned about having multiple roles? So now, all of a sudden, I'm videographer, photographer, now I'm a sound recorder. And for sound capturing, uh, the most reliable method that I've come across is to get an external recorder, and these are called the Tascam DR10L Pros. These are an upgrade from the Tascam DR10Ls, they're the Pro version. They've got a longer battery life, and the biggest improvement is that they have 32-bit float recording. Basically means you can shout into the mic or you can whisper into it and the levels will be captured perfectly because later on in post you can adjust those but i do need to swap out the batteries so they take two double a batteries 
and yeah, they last for a very long time. I've been on shoots where I haven't had to worry about the battery and they've been like 10 hour plus shoots. Now one underrated accessory that 100% every filmmaker needs if you're filming outdoors is a wind fluff and a sticker. And this will increase the quality of your sound by levels. And when it's very windy outdoors, the last thing you wanna be hearing in your video is the wind sound. It's just so distracting. It's just not something as an audience you wanna be hearing. And um, what I have over here is the perfect solution to help you get better quality. There you go, you just put your sticker down, put the wind fluff over it, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna take this GoPro bag that my GoPro came in, put all of these smaller items into here. And then with these lapels, I could just wind them up. So as soon as I meet the boys, what we're gonna do is mic them up. So this is gonna be my first go-to piece of equipment that I need to open. So that's audio all covered. So the Tascams, they can just go straight into the bag there. Next up, we have a drone. This is the DJI Mini 4 Pro. This is the latest from DJI's mini range. Lightweight, it's under 249 grams, which is amazing because it has fewer restrictions compared to the more heftier drones. Uh, honestly, an incredible drone. It also has a feature where the camera can go vertical, which is amazing as well because you don't have to then crop your horizontal footage. You could just flip your camera to film in vertical. Very portable and handy drone. I also need to pack a remote and a couple of batteries for it. I'll just pack three batteries into this cradle because I might as well and then I'll have one in here so I've got four batteries in total and I could charge them <laughs> whenever I want and then you need a remote and this is the remote I got it's also got this cool flip screen cover to protect the screen and then the joysticks there you go. I also have a bunch of ND filters for this drone. All right, I'm gonna use this zip compartment for the filters. And then for the actual drone, we'll just do this. The batteries can go here, wrap that around, and I don't know, just have to sit somewhere here. It's about to get messy. It's about to get real messy. Action cameras. Now during this trip, the boys are gonna be doing certain types of activities. And I love to bring a couple of action cameras with me that I can clamp or stick onto surfaces or moving vehicles. And right now, this is my GoPro collection. And specifically, this is the GoPro 12. Now, what I love about the GoPro 12, apart from all the new features GoPro have added, is that at the bottom here, see that Jack? Traditionally, you needed to undo this, put a bunch of like GoPro accessories onto here. Not anymore, Jose. He's got a quarter inch mount. And these are my GoPro accessories that I think I'm gonna take on the trip with me. Clamps. For something like a road trip video, I'd probably go for a lot of suction cups that I can stick inside of the car because it's very hard to find like clamp points in a car. Uh, for this trip, I don't think I'm gonna need any suction cups at all, but I will need something that I could just quickly clamp onto and then leave with the boys. So yeah, we're taking one, two, and three GoPros. I'm also gonna take two battery cases. Now these cases uh, hold up to three batteries. And I don't think we're gonna be shooting on GoPros all day. So these are just like my backup action cameras. So that's GoPros packed. The clamps, I'll put them here at the bottom of the bag. What about these super clamps? Where can they go? I'm gonna swap this and I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna shove them in here. I think we're looking pretty good here. That now leaves me with lighting. So I want a portable lighting solution and the type of shoot we're doing specifically might require me to be able to film an area that needs to be lit. Here I have the Aperture MC LED panel. It's a small portable light. There you go, it's the size of my palm. You can easily switch it on by flicking this on. And it's an RGB light. So not only will it allow me to change color temperatures, you can also change the hue and like the color of it, which I think is very cool. Pretty cool, right? I have a cold shoe accessory that lets you put it onto uh, the top of your camera, but my mic is taking that port. So we're gonna have to think different. Remember I told you the benefit of having quarter inch holes on your camera body without having a cage? Well, look at this. I have this little accessory over here and I'm gonna simply screw it into my camera. I'll be like this, nice. Another cool accessory I like to bring with me is a tripod. When the boys do longer segments, for example, when we've sat down to eat some food and perhaps maybe I wanna dig into my meal as well. I can put the camera down and get a nice static shot like this. Very good solution for that. And then when we're back on the go, I might use this as like a grip to help me be more stable. Sometimes I just do this, I walk around, boom, boom, easy. And then seeing as I'm bringing the, this tripod, might as well bring this little accessory. All the vloggers out there will know what I'm talking about. This is a magnetic ring for your iPhone. 
So there you go, all of a sudden, you've got a vlog camera on you there. Previously, we used to take uh, vlog cameras for the Sidemen. I, I think that whole thing is changed now due to some new tech coming out, and that is a very popular camera you all must have heard about by now. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. It's a vlog camera, it's hand-sized, and it's incredible. It's got loads of cool AI features on here. Now, other accessories to think about during travel shoots, power bank, memory cards, cables, plugs for whenever I need to charge things on the go. Now, this thing is from Anchor, and this is called the Gang Prime. Now, this bad boy uh, provides of up to 120 watts of power. This is enough to power uh, a very powerful laptop, and it's got multiple USB ports on it. It's got two USB-C ports and a USB-A port as well. This power bank is one of the best things ever. It actually has enough power to charge a laptop. That's how good it is. I can't tell you how long it lasts, but it is a Anker 737 power bank, power core 24K. Another cool feature of this power bank, uh, despite its two USB-C ports and USB-A port, is the fact that it has a screen which tells you how much power you have remaining. And I find that useful. I'm also bringing an SD card reader. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I can connect an SD card reader into my phone, which will allow me to either view or back up footage from the specific shoot. Memory cards, very important. I've got a whole case and it's full of memory cards. These are all 256s. I mean, I'm probably only gonna go through two or three cards, maybe not even that, maybe just one card, but I'll bring all of these just in case. Now, I've brought an LED light, but I think I need to pack some more punch when it comes to lighting. Uh, in this specific situation, uh, we are going to a location that I might need to light up. This is from a company called Small Rig. And this is their RC60B. Uh, the B stands for bicolor, so you can change the temperatures on this light. You can go uh, warm or cold. The reason I bought this is because it has a built-in battery, which means I don't have to bring extra accessories to clip on batteries onto this thing. This is it. Wow, this is impressive. If I wanted to, look at this. If you're telling me I could come to a location, place this thing down, switch it on, and it will light up the scene. 60 watts of power, uh, let's test it, let's have a look. So, flick it on. Whoa! Yes now, so this is at 100%, 50%. Yeah, no, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. The intensity. This is perfect, this is all I need. I'm gonna have to be careful about how I pack this into my backpack. I might just have to face it away from everything else. I don't know, I don't want it getting all scratched up. So, might have to swap places here. Other stuff might have to go here. Tripods, one, two, don't need this bag. And there we go. I think I have successfully packed for this shoot coming up tomorrow. I am also gonna be documenting my trip. I'm making a behind the scenes video from that. And I had a camera company called Insta360 reach out to me and sponsor that future video to see if I can test out this camera for them. This is their new Insta360 Ace Pro. So it's an action camera, and I'm looking forward to testing it out in that video. By testing cameras out in the field, it kind of allows me to stay updated with the new tech that's coming out, and it's just something I love doing. So thank you Insta360 for sending this out to me. They've also sent me a bunch of new accessories. So this video has been me preparing for a Sideman travel shoot. I hope you guys have enjoyed it just as much as I have enjoyed packing my kit. Really looking forward to getting back into the swing of things and using all my gadgets and toys. All right, that's it. I I'm off to the airport.